And then he says, I am a worm and no man. Turn to John chapter 3 and look at verse 14. John 3, 14. Christ talked with Nicodemus. For as Moses lifted up the serpent, serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Who shall believe in him should not perish but have a lasting life. When Christ on the cross, he likened himself to the devil, a serpent lifted up. Christ on the cross, the Bible says, God hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the rights of God in him. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed, cursed, cursed is that one that hangs on a tree. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Amen. It isn't a matter of a bunch of Southern Baptists saying they think 46% of the people go to hell because they haven't trusted Christ. That's true, but that is a small amount of the matter. The small of the matter is you're sitting there trusting your righteousness to save you after he did that for you, and you're going to get away with it? No, you won't, Amen. you self-righteous rascal. Amen. God Almighty knows what he did for you. What he, he became sin Amen. for us. And you're going to get around that with your little talk about doing good to your fellow man, your neighbor. Yeah, in a pig's eye you are. Yeah. All right, you said thing right there. He became like a serpent. He called himself a worm. Dies on the cross. Incorruptible seed. The word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Seems to me I saw that seed one time under a microscope. If I remember my biology right, I think that seed looks like that. Isn't that something? The little boys, they take that word sometime and apply it to parts of the body. Isn't that a strange thing? You reckon Darwin had it backwards? Darwin said, well, you've got these vestigial organs, your appendix, you know, and the, the coxy, the tailbone, and the, the, the plecosemolaris, little thing around the eye, and you've got these little things like the adenoid and the appendix, you know, and the tonsils, that are remnants when you used to be an animal. Hey, man, what if that's a prophecy? What if that's what you're going to be? Now, wouldn't that be a thought? Take your Bible and turn to Isaiah chapter 34. Get Isaiah chapter 34 in one hand, get Revelation 9 in the other. Isaiah chapter 34 and Revelation 9. Uh, Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9, verse 7 to 11. Revelation 9, 7 to 11. Here's something came out of a bottomless pit. And what comes out are mutant monsters, just like you see in cartoons uh, Saturday morning. These mutant monsters have hair like women and faces like men. And they got tail like scorpions and teeth like lions. And they look like locusts and they're like horses. They're monsters. Those things come up from downstairs. Those things will come up in the tribulation. Those things are some kind of a man, animal in a stage of, of degeneration. They used to talk about centaurs and satyrs. And a centaur was half horse and half man. And the satyr was half goat and half man. And those things were supposed to be genetic mutations like they're working on right now at the University of Florida, the University of Alabama, the University of Georgia, the University of California, the University of New York, and Chicago and Berkeley, the genetic laboratory, to get these things together. You know what you saw if you saw Star Wars? I didn't see it. I've missed everything in my, in my lifetime. I'm the most unlettered, untutored, ignorant, uncouth hillbilly you ever saw in your life. I did not see Star Wars. I didn't see Jaws. I didn't see Rambo 1, Rambo 2, Rambo 3, or Rocky 1, Rocky 2, Rocky 3 and a half, or 6 and 3 quarters. I've missed all the Miss America contests, all the Miss University contests. I couldn't tell you one thing about the Watergate situation. I didn't listen to 15 minutes of it. My total input in Desert Storm, I think, was three newscasts of four minutes each. I missed the whole thing. I missed the moon landing in the Iraq, Iran. I don't know what Oliver North's doing, whether he's trying to make a living or just shoot guns. I don't want to... I don't want to 
I missed the whole thing, see. <laughs> but I know what Star Wars had in it, the advertising. And here was a Skywalker going like this, you know, uh, Luke uh, Skywalker or something. And then right behind him was a thing that was half animal and half man. You know, tobacco chewer or whatever he was. He going along like this. And then right behind him is a metal man going along, a robot. See, you're, com you're coming down here. They're trying to show you a chain of genetics. Can't you get that? And here comes on this metal uh, neuter person here coming along like this. And then right behind them is a sure enough slot machine. There's a fire plug coming on right behind him. And they're going right back down. But they're trying to tell you there. They're trying to tell you that when they finally find the key to the genetic code, they can link vegetable, animal, and mineral kingdom together in one evolutionary form. Of course, you'd have to have something get you across each gap. For example, when you get to the tobacco chewer, you have to have something to get him over to the human being. Something has to come in there with a seed of some kind of kind of fix that thing up. Gets thick after a while. All right, now that thing right there in, in Revelation chapter 9 talks about monsters. Now one more, Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34, Isaiah 34, verse 9 to 16. Isaiah 34, 9 to 16. You know the trouble all this stuff is, and I saw this stuff, folks, I mean the trouble with 90% of the Methodist churches, 90% of the Presbyterian churches, 90% of the Lutheran churches, 95% of the Catholic churches, and 60% of the Baptist churches, and everything in between. We have gotten the place where we've taken a light view of eternity, and a light view of salvation, and a light view of Christ's atonement, and a light view of heaven and hell, and it's destroyed this country. Amen. We're dealing with things here that are so profound and so tragic and so terrifying that nothing that's been preached in the pulpit, most pulpits for the last 20 years, would even be a, a, a runner-up to it. We're talking about you losing your soul. Your soul is a bodily shape. You just read it. I gave you the verses. I gave them to you in Luke 16. I gave them to you in Revelation 20. I gave them in Revelation 6. I showed them to you. If you lose your soul, you lose your bodily shape. That's all there is to it. Isaiah 34. Now look at that thing there. Look down through 9, 10, 11, 12. Isaiah 34. I'll give you time to read it. Go down there. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And look at that description. You know that's describing? That's describing fire and brimstone where the smoke goes up day and night and it'll never be quenched, and in that place are birds, owls, vultures, cormorants, bitterns, see them things? In your Bible, those things are pictures of unclean spirits. The found Leviticus 11, and the Holy Spirit himself is likened to a bird, a dove, in Matthew chapter 3, and those are unclean birds, pictures of unclean spirits. And then right in the middle of that thing down there, uh, doesn't it say Seder somewhere? What verse is that? 14? A satyr. I think it's half goat and half man. All right, look at here. When those things come up, those things are in a stage of degeneration, and it may be, it may be what's going to happen to you is, instead of going up to you, become a god from a worm, maybe you go from here back to a worm. For example, at the white throne judgment, up you'll come and you'll be a judge, and it'll say, depart from you, curse of everlasting fire, prepare the devil and angels, and when Jesus Christ comes for me, and I go up, I'm going to be like him. Like him. For I shall see him as he is. Well, if you're of your father the devil, and thus your father you will do, you'll have to be like him. But if you're like him, you know what that Bible says you are going to be like? A great red dragon. You said word for worm? Where the worm dieth not, the fire is not quenched. Where the worm dieth not, the fire is not quenched. Where the worm dieth not, taken out of the new Bibles. Where the worm dieth not, the fire is not quenched. That word there in the Greek for worm means a red maggot. And if you go down the copper mines, Ecuador, and get down there inside them volcanoes, get picking around to get you some copper down there, you'll find red snakes down there six feet long. They're doing real fine at 200 degrees. That old boy up Kentucky had a fellow, he's got a book called Life After, not Life After Death, but Beyond Death's Door. We sell at the bookstore, don't we, Brother Nyler? 
beyond death's door, that Kentucky doctor that sold over there. That fellow had a patient bringing in and bringing out, bringing in and bringing out. Every time I'd come by, a guy come back in, the sweat be screaming off his forehead. He'd say, don't let me go back. Don't let me go back. Hang on to me. Don't let me. Hold me. Hold me. Don't let me go back. And one time they came back, he had him off and on for five or six hours. He'd come back, face just screaming the sweat, screaming, don't, hang on to me. Hang on to me. There are red snakes down there. Don't go to find it out. Amen. If that book is true, and you know me, if that book is true, it suggests, I don't teach this doctrine for sure because I'm not that sure about it, it suggests that the second death is you don't just lose your body, you lose your soul. And you'll wind up on a pile of them things. Did you ever see a pile of them? Amen. Like that. You want the flesh, do you? Get on it. Come on. Come on. You'll get on that thing. Hermaphrodite. You want that way, do you? You'll get it. You like music? No more music. You like little babies? No more little babies. You like flowers and sunshine? No more flowers and sunshine. You say, what a, it's hell. It's hell. And it ain't just separation from God. You lose your soul. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever beath on him should not perish, 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 but have eternal life. Let's stand for prayer. Father, we pray the Holy Spirit of God will bless the message tonight. I've tried to make the gospel just as plain as I can tonight. I know if these things are so, it's the most momentous thing in this universe. I know the greatest step a man ever make in his life is the time he decides to step out and trust Jesus Christ instead of his own righteousness. I said, Lord, I want to thank you personally for my salvation. Right here, Lord, just like what anybody in this room. If I just stand here by myself, there's nobody here, Lord, just but me and you. I want to thank you, Father, for touching me one day and open my eyes and showing me my terrible condition. And Lord, I wouldn't miss it for anything. I'd have never forgiven myself. I'd never forgiven thee if I'd, if I'd missed glory with thee and wound up that place that I deserve to go. In order for somebody here tonight with any, any wisdom, any, 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 just the slightest compunction, the slightest desire to be saved, we pray they'll step out in the invitation, not wait, but come to the altar tonight and let somebody have a word of prayer with them and get this matter fixed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's say... Uh, we know just as I am, we don't need our hymns for that.